table Board of Education, June 26, 2012. Uh, everybody please stand and join me in pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board Secretary, this meeting is advertised and move on to the Open Public Meeting Act. Yes, it has, Mr. McInerney. Let's have a roll call, please. Mr. Balthus. Here. Mrs. Backman. Here. Mr. Bashada. Here. Mr. Brzezinski. Here. Mr. Syak. Here. Mrs. DePinto. Here. Mrs. Rakuya. Here. Mrs. Kraft. Here. And Mr. McInerney. Present. We have no presentations, correspondence. There's no approval of the minutes. Is that correct, Mr. Board Secretary? Uh, yes, I apologize. I had to pull the minutes. Um, my notes didn't reflect exactly what happened okay. after looking at the video. Very good. Uh, and and then you just post them when you get them done. Yes, sir. Okay, there's no student council, parent involved, no attorney, no district highlights. Let's go right to the superintendent's report. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Buildings and grounds. Um, this is our required. Um, Harassment, intimidation, and bullying report at the end of December. We'll do another one at the end of June. When we state 45 um, incidences, those are 45 substantiated incidences, and we have about a 50% rate, so that means we probably had close to 90 or so different incidents that occurred during that particular time. And you see, the um, if you go down, uh, the nature of the HIV incident, and it's... Um, broken down by gender, et cetera. Effect of the HIV incident, and it's got that broken down. The mode of the HIV incident, disciplinary action taken, and other disciplinary action taken. Um, so uh, that concludes that section. Anybody have any questions with section A? With none, moving to B. Um, B are our regular resolutions up to number 12. Uh, 13 is a uh, an extension of our uh, approved supplemental educational services, which runs um, concurrently with the No Child Left Behind law. Uh, 14 is a disposal of the following equipment. Uh, 15 is uh, professional services uh, as listed, and these are mostly child study team related. Um, 16, 17, 18, and 19, I'm going to let Mr. DeAndrea, who has a little bit more insight to that, explain those. Item number 16 is in reference to our insurance our, our insurance program that we're with with SAFE. We just list the resolution that we're a part of it. Uh, number 17 is the acceptance of the lease purchase agreement. There were three separate uh, resolutions. One was added last night. Uh, we went out to lease purchase the bus and the technology. We got a rate of 1.399, uh, which is phenomenal in this day and market. So. Uh, we did well with that. Um, number 18 is to go out um, and solicit a grant writer, someone that can help us write grants that are out there, and then basically, uh, depending on who we select, uh, determines the type of contract. Uh, but since it's considered a concession, I have to advertise it and solicit proposals from individuals. Uh, the same is for 19, but under number 19, what I'm looking to do is solicit energy companies. Uh, what they do is on high peak de demand days, uh, we are willing to shut down our air conditioning and utilities so that we can provide it to the grid and they pay us for that. Um, one gentleman I met over a three year period, it could be as much as $100,000. Uh, they call you, they ask you to shut down, you agree, you shut down, they pay you. That's every building? Uh, no, the, basically it would be the high school, the UES, and possibly the middle school. These smaller buildings don't have, have enough central, You have to have central AC. Right. So what they do is they reduce your demand, your power demand. And then I also just like to jump to number 27, which is an also, I'm, I apologize, not 27. Um, number 30, which is also part of the lease agreement. So there's three separate resolutions that had to be approved for the lease agreement. Uh, but again, we're borrowing at 1.399. Uh, it's a phenomenal rate. Uh, we did well out there, and uh, it's saved us a lot of money. I mean, we're getting to do $1.8 million of technology by, with only borrowing 1.4%. So it's pretty good. Why don't you do a 27 as well? 
20 is the purchase of the bus that's in the budget. Uh, we're at least purchasing that. Uh, 21 is the agreement with Morgan Chase, the interest at 1.399. Uh, contract with Teachscape, that's for our teacher training for next year. Um, 23 is the Carol Rubino, we had that deferred payment. This is them to get on board to start doing the Eisenhower specs so that we can hopefully go out. Uh, January, February, to get some phenomenal pricing like we did with the middle school. 24 is our landscaping services. It's a unit price bid. Uh, so the late custom care came in the lowest on that also. Uh, 25 and 26 are both related to Salover School. Uh, we have money in the budget to upgrade the uh, heating system in Salover School. Uh, we're taking a slightly different approach in that we're going to try, we're going to actually do the in-house work of the replacement of the univents. And I guess the best way to describe it is the side of the building that where my office is down that wing, we're going to do all the work in-house, which is saving us a considerable amount of money. Since we have time to do it, Dennis feels we have the proper staff, we can do those items. Uh, we are going, to, once we select a new architect, we will move ahead with phase two, which would be the, the side of the building that Dr. Alfano houses. So we're doing it in two separate phases for two different boilers. Um, item number 27 was based on a meeting we had last night uh, with the Finance Committee uh, looking to reserve $750,000. And then I'll turn it over back to right. you, Doc. Thank you. Good. 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 Yeah, go ahead. Um, tw number 22, is this what, did we have this this year? Is this uh, the same price? Or? No, yeah, it's brand new. It's brand new. This is what we're using race to the top refunds to pay okay. this is part of that grant. This is our race to the top money. All right. And for number 23, did we solicit any other architect price or we just gave it off to Carol Rubino? No, recall, they, they already built the specifications and everything. We had that deferred agreement from back when we did the solar project. We deferred of their payment. They built the specs. We were now paying for those specs that they already built. Oh, so this is a payment for work already done? Partly and now going out to bid. So it's a two phase. It's the deferral that we agreed to and the payment to start going out to bid on it. How much more is deferred out there, you know? Just Eisen, uh, Truman Bay. School, Truman School, Salover School, and parts of the right, okay. high school. Coming off that, that route, um, does this lead us anywhere closer to getting solar? It's been a while since we talked yeah. about that. Solar, at this point in time, the only option that's really available is to do the lease purchase uh, option. Don't own it yourself, but there are very few companies that are out so there. So the county think. dropped it? county dropped it. From what I'm understanding, SREX, if you recall two years ago, we were talking around four to 500. I'm now hearing that the numbers are below $50. So the, it bottomed out. I'll never paid for itself. Never paid for itself. The only option you have is if you want to lease out your roof space to someone else, but from what I'm hearing, that's not working at this point either. Uh, Mr. D'Andrew, on item number 27, the, uh, the transfer into, uh, into capital, or the capital reserve. Uh, I agree with transferring into capital, but I looked at your numbers, uh, and I'm a little bit concerned about the 750, because that brings our surplus down to about 650,000. We generated at about 3 million this year. We're anticipating in terms of surplus from this year's budget. But a million of that was related to health benefits, correct? For the discussion you had, yes. So we're probably going to end up with about two million in surplus as a result of this budget. Maybe again, back of the envelope based no on my past experience. There's really no way to determine 12, 13 right now. Okay. But even with that, even let's, let's assume optimistically we end up with two million. We have six hundred thousand remaining in surplus. We've got a two point eight amount, two point eight million amount that we put into this year's budget. We don't regenerate more than two million. We're going to put ourselves at a disadvantage next year. Um, yes, and that's a lengthy conversation that we had with the finance committee last night about that. Uh, I, my concerns, as I shared with the committee, is I'm looking forward to 13, 14, 14, 15. Uh, the amount of trying to generate three million dollars 
for tax relief on a reoccurring basis is a concern of mine at this point in time. We did discuss it, and I guess we we left respectfully disagreeing as to using the 750. Um, but it, there's, I don't believe either side can prove where we're heading. It's all speculation and opinion <coughs> at this point. Uh, but I, I, as I shared with the committee, bringing down to 635, if there's any form of tax relief needed, the surplus is now dedicated to uh, a capital project. And we, if we don't generate $3 million, it's coming off of the tax base, or you have to re look for money in state aid or other sources to make up what you don't have regenerated. But that was a discussion the committee did have last night. Okay. Um, Mr. Syak? Yes. Uh, just for your information on this, what the committee, I'm not in charge, Mr. Dalk is, but we discussed this last night. And one of the issues that was brought up was two years ago, if you remember, we had excessive surplus and our governor nailed us for $600,000. All right, by putting this money into a capital account, like I mentioned at the last meeting, it has twofold. First of all, it becomes a restricted where the council or the governor or legally should not be able to touch this money. Number two is the fact that with this money into this account, this will not affect the budget for 2013-14 as drastically uh, for the capital improvements that are necessary for the district. No, no, that, that piece I agree with, uh, and that's why, like I said, and I would be open to, you know, three, four hundred thousand uh, as opposed to 750 because I don't want us to go over that 2% threshold, but our 2% threshold is 1.6 million of surplus, give or take. One, five, yeah. one, five, one six, and we're going to be at 600,000. I can't picture you in four days being off by a million bucks. No, I hope not. Uh, I can picture you being off by a couple hundred thousand, which is why I'd be open to putting some money in. I'm just concerned that this, the 750 could be too much. We did the one thing we discussed, and we know that if this is a risk and we run short, um, we agreed since we continually put one to two million dollars in our capital projects for every budget, that we would forego that in the next budget to cover it if we ran short. We felt it was safer to put it away and make it up in next year's budget and just use this as our capital money and have no capital money in the next year's budget, and that would compensate for it where it was safer from other people's hands and we wouldn't risk it. And most of the projects that we do need to do with some of this end up being falling into capital. <coughs> the windows, we discussed what belongs in there, so any windows, bathrooms, all of that could be come out of this money. So it wasn't, we didn't think it was that big of a risk. Um, all right, that's why I'm, I'm gonna be voting no on, uh, on number 27. And I understand that logic. My only concern is once that money goes into capital, there's nothing saying that we won't find a project in the middle of the year that we're going to allocate that money for, which then would kind of defeat that that plan. Um, so I guess I, I I would be okay with uh, 350, 375. In the middle of which year? 12. In the middle of, of, of this year coming right. up. But we already have 1.2 million reserved for capital this year. We already have 1.2 million. No, we've, right. we've used all that. No. Our capital reserve is down to a thousand. Right, but we have capital operating money. Yes, yes. Same, uh, capital operating. Same dollar amount. But, but even, even if you look at this past year in experience, we did pull money in the middle of the year, correct, out of capital reserve to do additional projects so that at the end of this year, we were left without any capital reserve with the exception of what we're replenishing with. Correct. Right, but most of the money that we also pulled out for those projects came out of the health benefits line. Yes. It didn't really come from capital. Okay. Uh, also, I need to abstain on the check uh, for Premier Penning Solutions. Okay, um, on page 13, that's our Perkins grant, number 28, is 30224 which we receive every year. Um, no Child Left Behind grant award is 809638 um, and it's broken down, Title 180, 609000 and change, 2A, 141000 Title 3, 20199 uh, Title 3, Immigrant, 39362 which adds up to your 8. 09638 and listed below that are all the offsets uh, within the salaries in the different accounts and that takes you through pages 14 and 15 and some summer uh, money also screenings as well is listed in within that money as well um, moving along to number 30 um, a video already explained number 30 so we'll move back to page um, that basically is the end of that section so we're on page 19. Any other questions with that section? 
Dr. O'Malley. Sure. Uh, Mr. DeAndre, we had spoken yesterday. Could you inform the public and also the other members of the board about the Verizon? What's going on with them? Um, the last conversion of the Verizon system took place at the middle school. Um, and forgive me, I don't remember, early June. Uh, so at this point, Lightpath should have all of the lines for the telephone converted over. I have started to migrate over the burglar alarm and fire alarms to a company that was uh, awarded through the Middlesex Regional Ed Services Commission, XTEL, to take over the burglar and fire alarms. I've also now started to migrate over all of the fax machines over. Also, there's, there's some technical reason why Lightpath can't take over the faxes. Um, and then what we're going to do is analyze at that point if there are any other existing lines out there. And then at that point, we are going to cancel those lines. So we're getting closer to uh, completing this project. Uh, as I shared with Mr. Bashada last night, I have other colleagues that I've spoken to, and they are experiencing very much similar problems that we are when trying to convert. Um, it was amazing to know that they didn't do a conversion because one digit was off, and they couldn't figure out that the digit that read 4-5 should have been 5-4. You know, so they canceled everything. Uh, you're at their, at their mercy when doing this. They realize they're losing a lot of business, and it seems like Lightcap is picking up speed, so they're doing less and less to convert. I even had problems with Xtel taking over the fax machines. They kept delaying the, to the conversion, so we're trying our best to get through the process. Okay. Um, Section C, personnel not certified. Frank. Uh, Frank. Uh, number eight, I'm going to stay on. No problem. And on uh, number three, check number 123650. I just want to note that the whole process was not exactly yeah. filed. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Falcon. That was the quill. Uh, personnel non certified. Uh, there's a termination of unpaid personal leaves. Um, and, and an adjustment to an individual salary, uh, as well as adjustments to the salaries listed um, below that, as far as some of the secretaries and so on and so forth. Um, number seven I'm is. Dr. Rafano, uh, our attorney suggested on item number six that we add at the item of, end of item six for the 2011 12 school year. He informed me as he, as he walked out for item number six. I'm sorry, say that again? At the Item number six, add for the 2011-12 school year. For the 2011-12 school year. Okay. That's number six on page 20. Number seven is withdrawn. Number eight is um, the hourly grades for those individuals project before for the extended school year, um, as listed on pages 21. Uh, on number nine, those are the substitutes for the extended school year, as listed. Um, number 10 is the cooperative business education student who will be working in the guidance office over the summer. 11 is some professional days. Um, 12 is a couple of employments. And this is the end of the 2011-12 substitute list. And then if you go to the next, number 14 is the upgraded 2012-13 list, that's the list we'll be going with going forward, which is number 14, which runs from pages 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Any questions with section C? With none, moving to personnel certified. Um, I would like to comment on Sherry Keenan. I worked with Sherry for two years. She's a consummate professional. She'll be retiring effective September 1st, 2012. She'll be sorely missed. I wish her a very healthy and happy um, retirement. And uh, it's going to be difficult to replace. So, Sherry, good luck and God bless. Number two, uh, resignation. There's a couple of resignations in, the, uh, in this section. Uh, some for coaching approvals, uh, unpaid medical leave, and uh, a bunch of pregnancy leaves as well as an extension to a child rearing leave and another unpaid personal leave. That's all on pages 28 and 29. 
there are some adjustments on pages 15 to the uh, salaries that we approved last um, last week or last at the beginning of the month. A lot of them had to do with longevity, so we had to uh, re, um, recalculate for some of the people who moved up the step. Um, some lateral transfers, that means is people are just moving from one grade level to another or subject, one subject to another. On page 31, uh, these are adjustments, salary adjustments due to people moving up uh, in either degree or credits. Um, number 18 is of the web assistance being approved. Number 19 is withdrawn. Again, number 19 is withdrawn. Number 20 um, is to approve and the attendance at a conference, at a training for that teacher. Um, 21 are new hires for 2012-13. We still have approximately 26 openings. Seems like we hire a few and we get a few people that either uh, resign or are moving on. So we're wavering around 25, 26 openings right now. So it's, it's normal for about this time of the year. So, and I have, I believe, three people coming in the next few days. So I will be going in the next couple of days to try to get these people hired. So hopefully we'll get down to about 22, 21 at the end, at the end of the school year. Um, 22, again, is uh, some related services uh, for ex the extended school year uh, and the teachers that are involved with those programs. Uh, 23 are the nurses for the extended school year, uh, some substitutes for the extended school year, uh, child study team additional hours as needed uh, for the psycholo psychologists and the uh, learning disabilities and social workers uh, depending on what we need them. Uh, some IEP work not to exceed 1600. These are regular resolutions each year. Professional day as listed and some curriculum writing as, as noted on pages uh, 35 to 36. Um, Prove Elaine Hall, um, her program, uh, Nina Ulbricht's program, the enrichment program, uh, and her stipend. Uh, as well as some of the teachers from the enrichment program is listed in number 31. Uh, 32 is uh, Eric Clark Malloy, the power school teacher coordinator. He's done an excellent job thus far. And 33 will be amended instead of it not to exceed 2,500, will be not to exceed $1,250. Again, not to exceed $1,250. Um, David Waits and Benny Ann Verner, this is for the sports physicals in the fall. Um, there's a grant of maternity leave to a coach. And again, this is the um, substitute list for um, the teachers, as well as class five substitute list, which are for the administrators. Um, continuing with, I'm oh, sorry, that ends that section. Any questions with that section? In number 36, I'm going to stay on Bob Trinowski. Okay. Number four, the three coaches, are they all employees? What page is that for? 28. The first two are, I'm not sure that. I'm not sure about the third. I'm not sure about the third. What was the question? Repeat the question. They're, they're employees of the district coach. Yeah. Well, number four. Oh, 28? Yeah. yeah. 28. On page 28. Yeah. Jessica Uresco and Jessica yeah, Roy are, are district employees. They're both teachers. I'll check. Um, moving to section E. Not the final. Hold on. Sure. Number 23, I wish to abstain with Charlene Kenny. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Section 8, policy. Uh, first reading. There's two policies, I believe, operations and maintenance. And if you go to page 41, there's one on integrated pest management plan. If you have insomnia, read those. Okay. Um, any questions with policy? We'll have a second reading of those two. 
uh, in July. Moving to curriculum. Um, these are our regular uh, harassment, intimidation, bullying reports and findings from 177 to 188. Special service placements, there's a lot of them because obviously it's for the next school year. And there is an addition to this section. We have, uh, and I'm going to read it. The Board of Education hereby affirms the recommendation of the superintendent of schools as previously affirmed by the Board of Education uh, with respect to HIP number E16-170-211-2. It's a mouthful. Any questions with section F? Okay, moving to G. Um, sixth grade orientation is August 22nd at 6 o'clock. Any questions with G? With H, uh, support services. Transportation waivers is listed and transportation routes is listed. There's a few um, trips listed on page 49 as well as the evacuation schedule that took place this year for the buses as by law. That concludes my report, Mr. McEnough. Any board discussion on the agenda for open up for the public? Now at this time, I'd like to open up for the public. If any questions or comments you have on board agenda items only, please come up, state your name, and address the record. I will open up again to the public if any business that may come before the board. Mrs. Gilcom. Certain positions are partially funded under the grant to serve the students and to serve the goals of the grant the way the grant is written. And it's, this is like, say for example, on one of the teachers, it's their regular, they get paid their regular salary, but approximately 20% of her work is directly related to the grant. So we're able to allocate 20% of those grant, 20% of her salary or about $10,000 from the grant. It offsets the local budget. I see you received one. Why didn't Mr. Aguilis receive one? His position doesn't warrant the grant? No, because, offset? Because, I am charge, because he does not work with the grants or the grant formulation. Okay. I mean, because some of these salaries I look at, I mean, getting back to Mrs. Ranowitz, I mean, she received the 19%, she makes 70 some thousand, more than some with master's degrees. It, but what I'm looking at, too, is some of the substitutes, and with all the controversy going about the high school principal salary at $500 a day, what are these applicants that are certified for principal or supervisors do you set a salary here? Because that has fluctuated also. Some for 200 coming to the meetings, finding some got 275, some got less. And it depends upon the situation or the principal or the school. No, well, there's two, two rates. There's level, you're talking to the administrator, right? Exactly. It's on page 200, $230. Supervisor principal. Yes, $230, that's a level five. 
and Ms. that's for short term. In other words, a week, a day. Well, Mr. Skronsky received 275 I have at home for some of the days that we're in. Then you had the principal for the high school, you had $500 a day. Well, 500 is for long. That's why I just wanted to know. Is there an amount set? Yes, it should be 230 and it should be um, Ms. Sutherland had a special rate because she was a long-term sub at five. The level five sub is, it should be $230. $230 a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I still, I mean, it's hard for me to understand how these grants are appropriated and how it's broken down, but. Well, if you look at, for example, if you look at the first group of teachers, those are our academic support instructors or ASI instructors who what work. What page is that? That's on page 14. 14, okay. 14. okay. The I first, see the percentages. There. Right. The first group, those are all teachers who work with our basic skills students who are identified. It's, they teach the Title I classes. They teach the students that are targeted in this grant. So we are able to use some of the grant money to offset so the local district does not have to pay the full amount of their salary. Because one grant, I believe, well, is at 809000 Right. 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 But, right. But that's not all for salaries. There's a lot of different things that we are, we are mandated to use those money. So more or less, they give you a guideline. When they give you the grant, you receive a guideline. How we can use it. And we have to actually submit to them how we use it. They're actually coming in to, to audit us at, to the audit. E at the end of July to make sure that we're spending everything exactly the way that we should. Okay, thank okay. you. Anyone else from the public on the agenda right now? Seeing none at this time, I'd like to close the public portion of the agendas and entertain a board motion to accept and follow the superintendent's report. So moved. I need a second. Mr. Second. Second by Mrs. Trapp. <coughs> and you roll call. Oh, thank you. Mr. Balkan. Yes, except the next speaker is out. Mr. Backo. Yes. Mr. Bishada. Yes. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mr. Syak. Yes, with the exception noted. Uh, Mrs. DePinto. Yes. Mrs. Rakuya? Yes. Mrs. Trapp? Yes. And Mr. McEnough? Yes. Mr. Syak, delegate to the New Jersey uh, School Board Association. Uh, two items. First of all, the uh, tenure bill has been moving through the legislature and has been approved by the, uh, the legislature and now goes to the governor's desk. Uh, the governor is expected to sign it. Uh, the bill itself represents uh, what I think everyone agrees is a, uh, a compromise between uh, the governor's desire for significant tenure reform and the desire of some other labor organizations uh, to protect their members. Uh, some of the concerns that still exist uh, from New Jersey School Board's perspective with regard to the bill uh, the main issue is seniority, the fact that uh, last in, first out is still preserved under the current bill. Uh, that is a concern, and also the association is concerned that the arbitrator pool that will ultimately rule on these types of um, items should a uh, teacher be brought up on uh, tenure charges uh, is, is basically weighted uh, in terms of candidates who are arbitrators who are selected by the NJEA versus uh, New Jersey school boards. Uh, on the plus side of the bill, the bill does allow for an extra year of uh, mentorship for teachers. Uh, that is purely a mentoring year for teachers for development that's not counted towards the tenure process to ensure that they get off to a, uh, a sound start and really get their feet on the ground uh, you know, firmly uh, before really being measured in terms of uh, the tenure process itself. Uh, the other item I have is a follow from our last meeting. I spoke to uh, Gwen Thornton from New Jersey School Boards. Uh, she is unavailable to attend either one of our July or August meetings for, to go over the board's self-evaluation. She's already committed in other districts those days. Uh, my question for the board is, do we want to try for September, or do we want to schedule another meeting in the summer and dedicate it specifically to that? I, I had to ask. I think that would be an easy question. I, I figured that, but I didn't want to make an assumption. I have my direction. That concludes my report. Very nice. Um, committee reports. I know finance met. Mr. Bob was ending. He wanted to update that. Hasn't already been said. No, nothing. Did any other committees uh, meet that I know about? I don't think so. Okay. I, I do yes. have one update. Uh, we were able to get the map on the, uh, yes, the I website I for, for the community to see. Right. And for those that you can use the zoom in to see where uh, the sections are. 
I need discussion from the board before I open up the public. Seeing none, at this time I'd open up the public for any comments or questions or business that may have come from the board. So if you like some, please. Uh, Ms. Sullivan. Carl Sullivan, 2114 Bayhead Drive. Um, I've been to many board meetings when I was employed by the board, now I'm not employed by the board. And I feel that something has to be said about the references to what I was paid when I was the high school principal, the interim high school principal. There is a difference in the salaries of uh, a Mr. Skaronsky who fills in for an elementary principal. Much of it has to do with the hours that are involved. Uh, the number $500 a day is always thrown out. But what you don't understand is that many of those days were 10 hours because of the level of activity that goes on in this building at night, the number of affairs, uh, athletic and extracurricular, that the principal is supposed to go to, I went to all of those. So if you look at what I was paid for the time I was here and the number of hours that I put in, the number of weekends I was here, uh, but one was the OM tournament, I was here for two days, never put in a time card for a weekend event, any of them that occurred, but the OM tournament was a full day affair and, and the whole day before. It works out to about $50 an hour. So when you say $500 a day, it sounds like a lot, but then when you put it down to an hourly wage, $50 an hour is most reasonable for the responsibilities that I had to um, incur during my time here. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Anyone else from the public like to speak in any business that may have come before the board? If not, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.